Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas, and with me here today I have Team 13356 Roboforce from Fremont, California. They're currently 10-0 undefeated in NorCal's first season doing a league system, uh, which is just very impressive, and we're going to go and take a deep dive into their robot, what makes them such a high-scoring, consistent team, with Aiden, William, Warren, and Hyun, all that and more coming up on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for first students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. Alright guys, so why don't we get started with your drivetrain? I think you guys have a very aesthetically pleasing drivetrain. I'm sure it works well as well. Uh, it looks very compact and it looks like it has a lot of features, so why don't you walk us through it? Uh, so we embedded uh, one of our drive chain motors into the drive pod itself so that we can allow for more center space for other components. So we have uh, a pair of dry, a drive chain motors inside the pod. So this is some rated gear that helps with that uh, converts. Mm -hmm. yeah. sure, and then sure. we have uh, just another set that's inside the drive chain itself. And then with the drive chain, we can talk about this later, but we also have three metal uh, odometry pods. Yeah, and so uh, it looks like you guys have some sort of like L bracket uh, sticking out and attached to the front of your drivetrain with like a red rubber band or some sort of ring in the like on the side face of the camera. So is that intentional or is that something that's like just on there? You know, talk about that a little bit. Oh, this over here. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we're this is like a later thing that we added. So. In one of our autonomous programs, uh, sometimes the signal would rub, a, would like roll against our side, uh, sure. our side plates due to the motion that we use, and that and it would get stuck in between our drivetrain when we're cycling the cones. So we added this little thing poking out to try to like uh, prevent it from going inside. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then another thing I see is it seems like you guys have weights uh, or like some sort of object taped around the robot are those weights and you know like when did you guys yeah. decide to add them and how have they been working out so far yes these were added quite late into our uh, development and these were added to prevent the tipping of the robot which we encountered mainly in autonomous but also in teleop so when we would run autonomous when the virtual four bar lifted up when it reached its physical stop that would carry a lot of torque which led to the robot tipping a little bit and due to that, the dometry pods would get stuck, and that caused a lot of air, which was fatal for autonomous, and that wasn't very good in Teleop either. So we added these weights to counteract that force, and so far it's been working great. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I think another point I want to touch on with your drivetrain are the bumpers or covers you guys have in the front. So was that something you guys added like since day one, or did you like notice that there was a need uh, to add those and then proceeded to, you know, it looks like they're printed, so print and add them? Oh, yeah. So, so these... Uh... Uh, wheel guards are actually cut out of Dowron laser cut and we've had these on uh, from the start because we always thought uh, if the drive chain ever got caught on a ground junction that would be really bad for autonomous and also for tracking of the dometry pods because if the dometry pods get stuck on the ground junction mm -hmm. you know it loses track and your robot gets stuck yeah, yeah. and so uh before we go on and talk about your intake and lift system let's uh, stop for a minute and discuss your guys's like materials choice so it seems like you guys have a lot of different materials on your robot that you know just off the top of my head definitely see some 3d printing aluminum delrin as you said wood uh and so what inspired you guys to like experiment or use all of these different materials and how do you go about deciding like which material is most appropriate for a system oh, yeah. yeah so as you said uh we uh are switching to a league system so that means a month between each competition so that would mean uh, you have to be very quick with building your robot. And so we were initially going to go with full metal, uh, but that would take like a week for, for shipping to get to us. And that would like take up time. So we instead just, uh, so our first robot, we uh, laser cut all of our pieces out of wood. Because that just takes one day compared to a week plus some sure. downtime for the shipping of the metal parts. Mm -hmm. And it, it has saved a lot of time. It's actually pretty sturdy. And for LM2, we switched to metal drivetrain because that was final and we wanted uh, to cut that metal because there was a lot of stiffness issues with our drivetrain. 
All right. Yeah, fantastic. And so going on to your intake, as you guys have mentioned, you've spent a lot of time going over game strategy and thinking about like what's the best way to score points uh, with your drivetrain. So now going into your intake, what inspired you guys to go for a claw and virtual four by design instead of something like an extending intake or like a DR4B or just any any other intake design? Yeah, so a lot of the scoring uh, based things is all like constrained with the time that we have with the league meet. So the scoring mechanism has to be thought of very carefully because for league meet, the first design you have for LM1, you kind of have, can't deviate from that because you don't have much time for a full mm -hmm. robot redesign. So for LM1, or for our claw, for our claw, we just had a bulky uh, metal uh, claw, and that would just pick up without any of these grippy stuff. Uh, so as the game went, as our strategy uh, improved, we found that this was inefficient for how we wanted to play our game, and also couldn't like fit between the virtual four bar we had here. Mm -hmm. So for LM2. Uh, we opted for a compact design with 3D printed claws with some window sealant that we bought from Home Depot that we found that it worked pretty well. And just a servo uh, powering the two arms of the gear. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, simple does it, right? Mm -hmm. And so going on to your virtual four bar, how has that changed throughout the season or has it just been pretty much static uh, through all the league meets? Uh, so for our first league meet, again, time, right? So we initially just had a same side mechanism. Mm -hmm. So... We found that inefficient because the same side, that means in order to score in any of the junctions, you have to turn the robot 180. Mm -hmm. So for LM2, we had a design, a pass-through design, so now it flips all the way over. And now you don't have to turn 180. And it's cut down our cycle time from 8 seconds to around 5 seconds, and we still want to further make that cycle time faster. Sure, and it looks like there's some counter springing going on with that uh, bundle of surgical tubing. So how did you guys develop that? Uh, has that changed, or have you noticed like any fatigue issues with that or has it just been smooth sailing the whole time yeah so this was added later into the testing phase of our robot so we, so we actually broke a few of our virtual four bar servos uh this mainly because of the torque issues a little bit so we added this uh, surgical surgical tubing counter spring uh, to both help uh the virtual four bar servos but there's also a second one here that keeps his the gear mesh the gears meshed mm -hmm. because uh with this wood there's sometimes a little flexing after you use it for a while mm -hmm. so yeah that's why we have this. Got it. Kind of and it looks like you guys have some sort of mesh system, uh, like underneath your virtual four bar. So can you talk about that? I assume that was pretty difficult to model. So it was probably added after uh, the CAD was done. So what is it? What does it do? And how's it been working? Uh, so this mesh, we've had it from the beginning. So this allows, uh, protects the inside of the robot from any cones falling in. Because if a cone falls in, then you're kind of dead, right? Mm -hmm. So we just uh, cut these after we assemble the whole robot and it works perfect it like works a charm and yeah so after you have like it so it looks like the cone falls into it and then how do you get it out of the mesh because it kind of looked like it was holding it uh pretty pretty well which is not really something you want from a mesh right or like from a from a ramp uh so yeah, you drop it actually so oh, it actually bounces gotcha, off because this gotcha. mesh is like you know tight so it can bounce off mm -hmm. yeah yeah, no, that ma that makes a ton of sense. So I think this has been a fantastic overview of your hardware. I'm sure being ranked one in your league, your software has to be incredible as well. Uh, so why don't we start with your localization? How do you guys know where you are on the field during Autonomous? Uh, and Teleop, if you use that as well. Uh, yeah, so for Autonomous, our main localization sensors are the odometers. So we have three metal odom odometers here. Uh, we also use Roadrunner uh, as for the software part to process the information. Uh, so some issues that we have had with the odometers was that it wasn't like it was building up air pretty quickly. So the way uh, so we tried resolving it by switching from our previous plastic odometers to metal odometers. And uh, yeah, we found that the actual issue was our wiring. So we had the these encoder wires like bundled up with a bunch of power wires. And we found that when we took them out of the power wires and separated the wiring system, we were able to get more, much more accurate reports. Great, yeah, no, that's fantastic. And has your guys' odometry design changed throughout the season at all? Or was it just going from the plastic uh, plates to the metal plates? Uh, it was just going from the plastic plates to the metal plates. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. And so going on to the sensors used in your robot, I believe I saw a distance or a color and distance sensor right underneath your intake. Uh, what other sensors are you guys using and how are you using them? Uh, so one of the other sensors we're using is the distance sensor. 
So we just use it to uh, detect if there's a cone in there, and we use it in teleop, so the drivers don't have to click it and or do anything to make sure it grabs. And another sensor we have is the webcam. Uh, right now, we're only using the webcam to detect the signal sleeve, which is right now just uh, three different colors. So it's really easy to just use a rectangle and just determine the average color. Uh, in the future, we do plan to use it for auto aim and uh, yeah. Sure. And so, you know, you guys are obviously a very well put together team. This robot not only uh, looks like it functions great, but does function very well and is consistent. So going forward, when is your next competition and what changes are you guys planning on making for it? Uh, so I think our next league meet is February. Um, or maybe, no, I, oh, yeah, January, sorry, yeah. It is somewhere in the middle of January. So some things we plan on making a change to is on our claw here. So we have we have uh, gears here, and in, we noticed in, uh, especially our last league meet, sometimes uh, it wouldn't grab the cone correctly or it might slam into the wall. Mm -hmm. And it caused these gears to slip, and we've had a lot of slipping problems with them. So uh, we want to change them to like a linkage idea. Hmm. Uh, so that I won't uh, skip as much. Sure. So that, that was one change that we yeah. were planning to do. You know, or you guys could look into just printing gears with larger teeth or yeah. uh, laser cutting or anything. It seems like you guys have mm -hmm. a lot of manufacturing options. No, but that's fantastic. And then what about software-wise? I know you guys mentioned using the camera for auto-aim and stuff. Is there any plans to implement that for the next League Me? Uh, for the next League Me, our first priority would probably be... Uh, doing improving our slide uh our slide code so right now uh right now we're using a custom uh control loop that has a pid in it and we're using that uh with a also a custom like velocity profiling so we found that it was a little bit faster than using regular pid but uh next league meet we're planning on using a uh, feed forward control loop to maximize the speed uh and we're also planning on having automated teleop. Uh, so this is mainly just the part where we, we're traveling around obstacles and not the endpoints uh, because we don't have that much time. So traveling mm -hmm. around the obstacles would like help uh, improve our cycle time a lot. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. Uh, Roboforce, I think you guys have given a, some great insight into your robot and the power play game and how its challenges can be solved. So. Thank you very much. I'm sure the FTC community will benefit a lot from this interview. Uh, and reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash first to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at Kettering.edu slash FIRST. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.